Hi, I'm Ken Johnson for another episode of SecCast. In this tutorial, we cover using Helmet in conjunction with Express's built-in C-Surf protection to perform some very basic security enhancements to our Node application. The first thing we're going to cover is Cross-Site Request Forgery, or C-Surf. In order to do this, we're going to actually show you what a C-Surf attack looks like first, and then we'll implement protections and show you how this mitigates the attack. To demonstrate this, we will first log in with the admin account with a password of admin. After verifying that these credentials are correct, we'll log out of the application. The next thing we will do is log in as a user. We will attempt to update our password. We'll take the request to update our password and build a CSERF proof of concept. We will then modify the contents of the CSERF proof of concept so that the next user that clicks on this will change their password to the word test. We'll then log in as an administrator, click on the HTML file to simulate a CSERF attack, then we will verify that the admin account's password has changed from that of admin to test. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is log in as an admin, and we'll display our passwords so that we can verify that admin is our password. Let's go ahead and log out. Now we want to log in as user. We're going to try and change our password to test. And you can see we display test as our password. And we'll intercept the request to update our password by catching the request in our local intercepting proxy. We'll use this tool to build a CSERF proof of concept. So we need to copy the request and paste it into an HTML file. We want to change the username value from user to admin. So we'll have to modify that bit of the code. And we'll save this file, drop the request, and continue on. So now we want to go ahead and log in as an admin again. And again, we will display our password. And now that we've logged in, it's time to click on that file to simulate a CSERF attack. Now normally this request would be generated through an application you were visiting. But in this case, we'll just open the HTML file and execute the request. OK, so we've executed the request. Let's try to log in now with the new password of uh, test. And it does work. The CSERF proof of concept is successful, and we know that this application is vulnerable to CSERF. So now we must fix this. Once again, to reiterate what a CSERF vulnerability is, it is ultimately a failure of the web application to validate that the request it has received was meant to be sent by a user and is not the result of HTML or JavaScript triggering a request on behalf of an unsuspecting user. The Express library already comes with CSERF protection functionality. You must first enable this functionality, then create a way for our view files to retrieve the token generated by the Express CSERF protection functionality and embed this token within our HTML forms. We will enter in some code here that activates Express's CSERF protection. And then we're going to create a function that, in essence, gives us a CSERF token variable that we can access from each one of our views. And this allows us to put that into our form as a hidden input. It will be passed when the request is sent to the application. And then we'll enter next. And this allows the code to proceed in its chain of execution. Then we'll add a hidden input field here. We'll call it underscore CSERF. And we'll give it a value of that CSERF token object we created. We'll put this both in the login page as well as the my account page. Now we need to verify that this measure has actually worked. So we'll log in as the admin user. And then we're going to click on that CSERF file again to execute the CSERF attack request. And once we submit that, we see that there is an error stating that we have an invalid CSERF token. This means we've successfully protected our application against CSERF attacks. So that really completes our CSERF protection portion of this tutorial. We'll proceed on to some basic response headers that you can set in order to further enhance your Express application. In order to enhance the security of our application, we will leverage the Helmet library. The Helmet library is a series of middlewares for Express applications 
that implement various security headers to make your app more secure. In the developer's own words, this is not a silver bullet, but it does afford some basic protections around things like clickjacking attacks and vulnerable caching directives, as an example. In order to include the Helmet library in our application, we'll need to add it as a requirement in our package.json file. We'll navigate to the server.js file and require it, and then we'll use npm install to install and download the library. Before we go ahead and activate some of these settings, I would like to show you the differences between our application's responses pre and post configuration. To do that, we will intercept a response from the application and send it to our comparer tool, which allows us to analyze the differences between HTTP messages. Here you see that we have a request to the application. What we really want to review is the response. So we're going to go ahead and click on that response and send it to compare. And we'll just store that for now. We will circle back to it later after we've configured our application. The developers of Helmet have provided a lot of documentation around the library. They've documented configuration options, how to set them, and what they do. So I encourage you to review their page to determine what security configuration options make sense for you. The first header we will add is the CSP header. This prevents cross-site scripting when using a modern browser. The next header we will add is the XFrame options header. This specifies who can iframe your site or if your site can be iframed at all. This helps prevent against clickjacking attacks. Next, we'll add the HSTS header. And this prevents sensitive information and session values from being passed over unencrypted channels. But we will go ahead and comment this code out as our site does not use SSL. Next, we will enable the IE XSS header, which, according to Microsoft's documentation, helps to mitigate reflected cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in IE8 and above. We'll enter the cache control header so that we do not store sensitive information cached in a user's browser. In addition to that, for older browser support, we have to enable a couple of other response headers. So we'll go ahead and do that in the same function we used to create the CSERF token object. We'll set a pragma no cache header, and we'll set a expires zero header as well. Again, this is to support older browsers. While we're enhancing the security of our site, we'll go ahead and place some protections on our cookies. There are two flags we can set on our cookie to make it a bit more secure. We'll leverage the HTTP only flag as well as the secure flag. Now for the secure flag, this means that since this site is not SSL enabled, the cookie will not be sent in the request. So we actually have to comment that out just for the purposes of this tutorial. All right, so now we want to see what all these configuration options we've set actually do. Once again, we will capture a response and we will send this to compare. Now we'll review the response pre-configuration and the response post-configuration to see the differences in the two. As you can see, there are several response headers that have been set, all of them to help enhance the security of your application. I'm Ken Johnson. This has been another episode of SetCast. Thanks for watching.